everyone and welcome to the Captain's Booyah blog video weblog. We are Thursday, November the 17th, 2016. Um, I completely missed, you know, forgot to talk about something yesterday, which I think it was kind of important. I mean, um, it's about the, the presidential elections in my country, so I guess it's kind of important, you know. Canada didn't really escape the country after these elections because normally I should be doing my internship uh, so yeah you know that's kind of my future in the balance there so yeah Emmanuel Macron who was minister of, um, of the economy uh, notable for not being uh, not having the the card of the socialist party but being apparently on the left anyway uh, he uh, officialized that he's going to run for president in 2017 so yeah next year um, he's actually going to be the youngest person to run for president in in the Fifth Republic at a whopping 38 years old. Apparently even Besançon uh, was older than him when he first ran for president and that was quite some time ago. So how fucking old is Besançon now? Anyway, uh, he had a public meeting, Macron in Marseille today, uh, talked about, you know, kind of he, what he would try to implement as if he were to be elected as president. Um, just one thing, it's going to be tough for the traditional left, you know, the Socialist Party, to deal with that. Because um, Macron is really on the left for some things, including how to treat the migrants, but he's also sort of, you know, very liberal when it comes to the economy, uh, which shouldn't come off as a surprise coming from a guy who uh, is, you know, studied in very, very high grade places and worked for Rothschild as a banker. So, yeah. Um, but it's definitely refreshing because criticize the parties, you know, saying, for example, that the primaries were only a way to. for people who don't see the Republic the same way to have a go at each other, you know, uh, having a little dig at the right, uh, who had their last debate for the primaries throughout tonight. Uh, I didn't watch it, but you know, it's essentially the same. Oh, who are you gonna vote for? Fillon? Uh, <laughs> Juppé? Who? Sarkozy? Ooh. <laughs> you know, the edgy choice of Sarkozy, who, uh, you know, like little bombshell dropped on him by Takedin uh, yesterday uh, with uh, uh, some revelations ab about the financing of his 2007 campaign, uh, his victorious campaign, that he apparently had some briefcases full of money handed to him by, by Takedin uh, from uh, Mr. Gaddafi, you know, of Libya. So yeah, uh, really great. You know, the guy... Uh, took some money from one of the richest persons in France, uh, richest people in France in 2012 because he was old, so yeah, <laughs> what do you care? Uh, <laughs> what an asshole, you know, he's been our president, but I really hated France when he was our president, I hated France when he was, you know, the minister of, uh, of, uh, of state, basically, seeking, you know, um, internal affairs, whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was a horrible, horrible time, and people want to vote for him, you know, crazy people, Jesus Christ, all that because he panders to the far right by being just not the far right, haha, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's really uh, a problem that we have to care, uh, you know, the people of the left like me, uh, about the, the, the primaries of the right, because all the polls have the the left not being able to go to the second round of the the presidential elections so we have to look at the right and that pisses me off you know the primaries of the left haven't started yet and here we are having to worry about the candidate of the right uh yeah so basically that's that uh before switching to nxt um there was an interview of Lassana Jara, who's you know recently been pretty shit with Marseille, 
and uh, this summer he had a terrible, terrible uh, ways of communicating about his future, saying, yeah, I, you know, hinting at a little conflict with the club, uh, looking at himself better than the institution, which you shouldn't really do. But uh, he had a little interview, who was this PR guy doing the interview? What the fuck? Um, and basically he said, you know, he corrected his trajectory on some things, saying that, yeah, without Marseille, he would apparently not be able to provide for his family, <laughs> especially with that uh, 10 million euro fine, be <laughs> because he left his club uh, unlawfully. And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, besides that, he was kind of the same arrogant prick that he always was. I mean, speaking of himself in the third per person, worse because he was on camera, but, uh, nah, not buying it. Uh, I think that I missed talking about a lot of stuff yesterday because I was pretty sleepy, you know? When I watched NXT, I actually fell asleep during the, the show, and I, it's really interesting that I fell asleep just long enough for me to miss the good, the good stuff, and, uh, I mean, I did a, NXT was pretty good. I mean, the show in itself it had some bits of a go home show, but more, uh, it was still more looking at stuff of uh, like, uh, you know, the focus was more on long term building, uh, because the bits related to to um, to the Takeover Toronto, which I'm really hyped. I'm pretty much more hyped for Takeover Toronto. Uh, than for the actual Survivor Series because I mean what are very important matches at Survivor Series it's going to be the match for the Intercontinental title between Sami Zayn and The Miz and uh, the match for the Cruiserweight title between Bieber and Ken Kendrick and Kalisto and it's not even the match uh, you know it's not even the matches that are important it's what's at stake the the Intercontinental title pro possibly moving to Raw and the Cruiserweight possibly moving to SmackDown with the 205 Live logo it changed. Now it, we're more in a, you know, uh, two <laughs> mid 90s um, uh, uh, soda pop uh, kind of inspiration. I like the scratch with the, the scan lines. It made it look like the line the the 80s CRTs looked great. Come on, um, have some respect. Uh, so yeah, uh, the bits for. Uh, for take over Toronto, Toronto were were video packages. The first package was, uh, you know, for the, a recap of the Dusty Classic with uh, ne last week's um, backstage segment where El Ring was uh, told that he wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to interfere in the finals. Um, not that it would really matter because the authors of pain they're fucking big. Then again, uh, TM61. Not small guys. Um, yeah, Paul Ring will be in a cage. Something that he knows because he was in a cage, in a cage, uh, like 33 years ago. Yeah, for the last battle in Atlanta. A uh, very, very important match if you want to know the history of Hell in a Cell. Uh, why? Because the last battle of Atlanta uh, was uh, a a cage match, but the cage had a roof. Um, it was because you know uh, they wanted the fight to stay in the cage. Uh, you know, you know, it was Georgia uh, Championship Wrestling actually one year before it was bought out by by Vince McMahon. Um, so there were those two wrestlers who were taking up a lot of time, of their time, probably too much because the NWA uh, had to step in and say, "Yo, you're gonna have a match. It's going to be." the last match between the two of you uh, and all the rules going out the window but it's the last match you have this match and then you never cross paths again you know done uh, and it was a very violent match obviously because <laughs> you know you wouldn't call it the precursor to hell in a cell if it, what he hadn't had a modicum of, of violence so uh, Ring is going to go back to the 80s in Atlanta I guess uh, except it will be a tag team match uh, the other talking, talking about uh, tag team match packages was a little package for 
the uh, the two out of three falls match between DIY and the Revival, uh, recapping their rivalry uh, with the great match at Takeover Brooklyn, and basically the you know DIY want to summon themselves as top guys because they don't know what they what's next for them if they don't manage to win the title uh, the titles in Toronto. We don't know what's gonna happen. If they don't win, it's gonna be Gargano turning on Champa, or or the opposite, and both sound equally horrible. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, and there was great, amazing package for the the title injury versus Bobby Roode match with Bobby Roode's Bobby Roode's lies being exposed one by one. <laughs> you know, you really have to watch that. And Ty Dillinger uh, telling his story, you know, his first stint in WWE, ending unceremoniously with a, a, a quiet release in, in early 2009 after being the dual crowd superstar initiative. And then coming back to NXT and uh, saying that he won't be underrated by anyone, he's the only one who will, who will rate himself, that's why he's the perfect 10. And uh, yeah, basically could be a show stealer, you know, there's Nakamura versus Samoa Joe, but this one could steal a show, I kinda believe it, um, because, I mean, Nakamura versus Samoa Joe is going to be two top guys going at it, it's going to be great, but it's a formula that we've already seen, uh, and it's probably going to be the swan song of Joe in NXT, I do think that it might be time for a call-up for Samoa Joe. Now maybe it's only me. Uh, so yeah, the show in itself, as I said, long-term building. The first one was the first match was a women's match. So yeah, you know because the women's they most of the women don't have to look at the, the title picture because of uh, Oscar, you know, facing Mickey James. Yeah, there's that match. Uh, so it was uh, Peyton Royce with Billy Kay facing Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan was about to win. Uh, but then <laughs> Peyton Royce, Jesus Christ, what the fuck was that interference? Just, uh, just, uh, <laughs> just fell over onto Liv Morgan and uh, caused well the disqualification and two on one, you know. Uh, and Alaya, Alaya, yeah, it sounds natural. Alaya uh, came, you know, came by just a bit too late because it was two on one again, uh, and he got dropped. On on Billy Kay's knee, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that looked awful. And then you know went to the outside and boom into the LED board. Ho ho! But then came Miss Ember Moon. Okay, so I guess that she won't compete for the title just yet. Who saved the day, dispatching pretty easily both Australian women. Uh, yeah, pretty easy actually. Uh, <laughs> disconcertingly easy, I maybe. Um, so backstage, you know, there was Ember Moon, Liv Morgan, and uh, Alaya saying basically that you know they're not gonna get bullied anymore, uh, not gonna let the fire be be extinguished, basically. So they challenged uh, two Australian women to find another heel uh, uh, girl, and uh, yeah, next uh, next time there's going to be a trumpery match. Then now, there's only. I do think that if you remove Nikki Cross from the equation, there's only two uh, heel women uh, on the current NXT roster. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's going to be one of them, probably the one who does MMA though, <laughs> because the blonde one, I mean, she's tall, she has legs, but she basically is a Summer Rae clone, maybe with more wrestling capacity, but who knows. Um, yeah. So then there was a return, but the return of whom, you ask? Well, of the drifter, who was asked to drift away. He hasn't improved on the guitar of or with the vocals, Elias Simpson. But I do like him very much. Um, he's a kind of a refreshing gimmick in NXT, so I want to see him thrive, you know? Um, he's just... Okay, uh, so he was facing a jobber called Nathan something? I don't remember. Pretty easy match, you know, that Nathan dude had a little bit of offense, but <laughs> very little bit. <laughs> yes. yeah. Elias well, Samson ga gained some muscle, which doesn't really fit into uh, the drifter lifestyle. Where does it find time? Does he find time to, 
you know, pump some iron. Um, I mean, when you only tour Florida instead of touring the whole fucking United States, maybe it helps, but I mean, um, I just wanted uh, Simpson to, to be a strong heel, uh, maybe a face at one point. I mean, a drifter doesn't have to be a bad guy. Yeah, um, who knows? Uh, and then there was the main event between, uh, as I said yesterday, uh, Cien Andrade Almas and uh, with a new fan attitude, you're all disrespecting me, so fuck y'all, basically. And Cedric Alexander, who got to, you know stabbed in the back, basically, you know he he took the pin, sure, uh, but he didn't deserve uh, what happened to him. I mean, Andrade Cien Almas felt disrespected, sure. Okay, dude, have at it. Um, but uh, I mean, Cedric Alexander, he's a nice dude. Uh, also very talented because the match was pretty fucking good actually like uh, there were th technically uh, you know and the ring work I mean the ring awareness of Andre Cien Almas is pretty fucking amazing like I find that he's taken on to a new dimension as a heel uh, which is obviously what they should have cast him as from the get go apparently but uh, I mean the ring awareness of Andre Cien Almas Going away from from uh, from Alexander after the lumber check was pretty fucking smart. Um, also, he uh, got the win with uh, pretty devastating stuff. Not very very um, uh, you know lucha libre, uh, more technical wrestling. But uh, yeah, uh, it, it was a very good match with uh, some you two very talented guys who. Who can, who could probably have a little go, you know, more matches, maybe combination of all that uh, at a future takeover event. Why not? Could work. Um, so yeah, I do believe uh, that there's a potential to that, you know, uh, uh, with a guy as popular as Cedric Alexander in full sale and uh, uh, an Andrade Cianalmas who feels li really liberated by his new gimmick, it could go far. Uh, so yeah, essentially there, there's that. I don't know if I said it, but uh, the, you know, next Tuesday I'm gonna have my little exam for the food, so I don't know if I'll be able to watch uh, Raw live after the Survivor Series. I don't know. I'll keep you upda updated on all that, obviously, on t Tuesday night. So yeah, basically, uh, I guess that's all for me now. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. What is there tomorrow? Oh, there is nothing. Fuck.